Okay, today's lesson, we're going to be doing lesson three in your science book, and we're going to be talking about, again, changes that we can make to the land. And, but instead of the natural changes, the quick changes that we learned about from nature, or the slow changes that happen, we are now going to talk about all of the changes that people make to the land. People make lots of changes to the land and the water around us, and we're going to see uh, what kind of effects that they have and why we make these changes. So make sure you have your science book out. Open up to page 132. Also have a pencil with you because you're going to be doing some writing in it. And when you're ready, go ahead and play. keep playing the video. Okay, changes to land. People making changes to land is a main cause of erosion. We cut down trees. Then we build houses. We make tunnels through mountains. Then we build roads. We dig into the surface of the earth. Then we take out rocks and minerals. Many of these changes we make cause erosion and deposition. Some of the changes we make slow down erosion and deposition. We build structures to block the wind. So sometimes we make these changes on purpose to prevent some of the changes that might be happening. Okay, tell what happens to the surface of earth after people make tunnels through mountains to build roads. So let's think of this, when people are Digging that tunnel to build a mountain, what is the effect? What kind of change is that going to cause? Okay, and we should know that that causes erosion and deposition. Okay, oh, actually it was on this one. Many of these changes cause erosion and deposition. Okay, uh, let's see. Were there questions I had to ask you on this one? Oh, not till the next page. Here we go. Changes to water. Let's see what we do to change the water around us. People change water environments in many ways. We drain areas of water. Then we build buildings in their place. We change the way that rivers flow. We build structures to stop floods. We build dams on rivers. The dams bring water to cities. Rivers deposit eroded soil and rock into the ocean. We take deposited sand from the ocean floor. We do this so ships can pass. Some of these changes cause erosion and deposition. Some of these changes slow down erosion and deposition. Okay, so we're changing water too in many different ways. Sometimes we wanna change the way the river is flowing or we want to stop the river, like we build a dam here to use this water. We stop the river from flowing, and then that saves up water that we can use for other things. So we make lots of changes to the water, too. Let's do this box here. Underline which changes you think people make that slows down erosion or deposition. So what sorts of changes are we making to slow down the erosion? Go ahead and find that sentence here of an example of something we do to slow it down. Okay, so you probably should have underlined here, we build structures to stop floods. That's going to slow it down. And we build dams on rivers. That will slow it down because we know rivers cause uh, erosion and if we build a dam then that river is no longer flowing so we're not going to have erosion wherever uh, that river was stopped okay so those are two ways of how uh, it slows it down okay and i have this question here on the bottom how might erosion on the sides of a river harm nearby structures so if you have a river and the sides of the river is starting to erode, what's going to happen to those nearby structures next to it? 
Okay, we know that it could probably flood with water. If the river overflows and it's eroding on the sides, then the river can flow out and destroy whatever uh, buildings there are next to it. So that could be a cause. It's going to flood the area around it. All right. Let, I want you to answer some questions now. First of all, what is one reason people change water? Okay, and you could have listed lots of different things. Um, an example would be to bring water to cities, like building a dam. It could be to stop the flow of a river to move it somewhere else. Not to stop it, to change the flow of the river, to move it somewhere else to build in an area that we want. It could be um, digging out the sand that got deposited so ships can cross by. Lots of different ones you could have put on there. Okay, second question. Look at the picture of the dam. How is a dam used to provide water? Okay, and we see here this dam is used because it contains the water into a certain area so it doesn't keep flowing. And then we can use all that water that gets stored up there to uh, provide it to everybody who lives in that city. Okay. Uh, next page. Stop wind and water. Okay, people also make changes to the land to try to stop wind and water because we know it can cause problems. So a dike is a long wall built to hold back ocean water. People build them to make dry land out of land that used to be underwater. So let's look at the picture here. This is ocean water. And then they have this wall here. And they built it up. This is a dike. And then we have land. So this land here probably at one point used to be underwater. And they didn't want to have it underwater. We could see that they're using this land for farming. Can you see all of that? So they built this dike, this big long wall, to keep the ocean water from, keep, from eroding and keep going further out and further out. Okay, now created land that we can use by building that wall. Now a dike is the name of the wall for the ocean. Okay, there's a different name when you're talking about rivers. So let's talk about that. A levee is a short wall along a river. People build them to hold back rising water levels. Levees protect farm fields and cities. They are usually made of soil, sand, and rocks. So here we have two pictures of levees. There's a levee here made out of rocks, okay, along the edge of that river. And then here we have another river or stream and this one is just made out of dirt. It's kind of a wall built up made out of dirt. Okay, and it's protecting, that wall is protecting that water from overflowing out onto the sides. Okay, and then lastly, a windbreak. A windbreak is a row of objects that blocks the wind. They can be made of trees, bushes, or fences. Oftentimes we'll see a beach along the shores of the beach and you can see fences along the shore of the beach. They're there to block the wind, those fences, and maybe even some bushes that are planted that can block the wind. Okay, but you can also use trees and, uh, yes, bushes to block it. Plants can stop soil erosion on slopes and hills. The roots help hold the soil in place. So if you've got a hill and you don't want all that dirt to come rolling down, put lots of plants along the hill and all of those roots underneath help hold that soil in place. Okay, look at the pictures. Circle the structure you could use to keep water from flooding an area that experiences heavy rain. Tell how you could use the structure. So, would you use a dike to help for heavy rain? Windbreak to help for heavy rain? 
or a levy to help with heavy rain. Okay, you should have chosen levy. Heavy rain cre prevents that flooding from coming over. And we can see this river can be, um, if it rains a lot, can go over and flood. So the levy was the best choice on that. Okay. Um, windbreak, I didn't point this one out. Here was those rows of bushes. And we can see the wind will have a hard time if it's blowing in this direction it's going to have a hard time getting past all those plants and bushes. So that's when they plant a big long row to prevent that from happening. Okay, I have some questions now for you. What is a windbreak used for? All right, you should have put that it's used to block the wind. Why do people make dry land out of land that used to be under the water, like in this dike. Why would they make dry land out of it? Okay, and you should have selected that they use it um, to for farming could be one example of why they would use it. Okay, and I have a little story that I'm gonna tell you and then you tell me what would be the best choice. Mr. Evan wants to plant tall bushes to block his house from wind. There's only enough bushes to plant a row on one side of the house. What information could, should Mr. Evans find out to help him decide where to plant the trees? Okay, so let me draw this out for you so you have a scenario here. You have a house and it's very windy. So he has some uh, plant, so he's going to plant some bushes, but he can only do it on one side. He can do it either on this side or on this side or the front of his house or the back of the house. What information will help him decide which side of the house he should put it on? Okay, and hopefully you thought of he should think about which direction the wind normally blows. If the wind normally blows this way, he's gonna plant the row here. If the wind normally blows that way, he's gonna plant the bushes here. So depending on the direction of the wind, that would uh, determine where he's going to plant those bushes to be the windbreak. Okay, and that's it for today. You are going to now do the interactivity on Pearson Realize, and then you'll do the quiz to see how much you uh, remember and learned from today's lesson.